Hello everybody. I hope everyone is having a great day. Um, I wanted to create this video for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, and the main reason is to provide all my family and friends an update on how I am doing and a uh, quick little health update. And the second reason is, you know, I've been scrolling the, the internet and looking through YouTube for scenarios similar to mine. And uh, although there's a lot of cancer videos, there's, there's not really many that are um, similar in terms of what I'm going through. So I wanted to put this out there in case there's any people in the same position that are looking for um, someone or somebody that's going through something similar. So uh, for those of you obviously that know me, you know who I am. For those that are just um, stumbled upon this video, my name is Efren. Uh, I've recently been diagnosed with stage three cancer of the small intestine. Um, they call it adenocarcinoma or adenocarcinoma. Uh, I've heard it pronounced either way. Um, is the specific cancer, but it's essentially I had a big tumor in my small intestine. Um, that cancer is pretty rare, as I come to find out. Uh, it is not something that's very common. Matter of fact, it's so rare that uh, the doctors don't really even have a designated playbook on how to address it. So um, the playbook that they're using to address what I have is the playbook that they use for colon cancer. So although it's not colon cancer, uh, I guess it's in the same family. Um, and that's what playbook we're using to uh, address my cancer of the small intestine. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown of kind of how it all, how, how I got to this point. I'll try to keep it quick. I'm gonna try to um, keep the video as short as possible, but I'm not gonna do any editing. This is just a straight uh, video where I'm gonna just uh, say a few things and hopefully it doesn't go on too long. Uh, a couple of months ago, about October, uh, I started feeling really strange when I would eat. I would get full right away. I felt stuffed. Um, and not with like a half portion or a quarter portion. I'm talking about a bite or a spoonful of something and I would feel full. Um, and then, I mean, I'd feel fine the rest of the day. I just felt full, so I wasn't eating. And then at night, I would be vomiting. Um, that went on for, for quite some time. I went to see a doctor. Uh, they gave me some medicine and said, hey, come back and see me in a month. I tried it. Everything just continued the same. Um, lost a lot of weight pretty quickly. Within about a month, I lost about 30 pounds. Um, so I never ended up making it to the follow-up for the doctor because I went to the emergency room. Because uh, one day, I just one night, I just threw up uh, really nasty. Um, not that any throw up is pleasant, but this was particularly nasty. And I said, okay, something's definitely wrong. So I went to the emergency room, checked in, had a ton of tests run, MRI, CAT scan, uh, endoscopy, um, gastric empty tests, all kinds of stuff to figure out what was going on. Uh, and at the end of that whole thing, um, they, I guess an MRI caught a spot on my kidney and that's what they got focused on and they focused on this spot on my kidney, which I still have to address. Uh, that's a whole different issue, but um, nonetheless, after four days in the hospital, they said they really can't figure out anything in terms of why I'm throwing up and why I can't eat. Everything looked normal from my digestive system, so they had me follow up with a GI doctor and they discharged me from the hospital after four days. Um, I went to the GI doctor uh, again, they did an endoscopy, they did all kinds of things. I actually had a, um, a bunch of other tests um, that, that they ran, uh, colonoscopy as well, um, and everything came out fine. So it was just kind of a head scratcher. So he ordered a, a scan of my brain because he says sometimes if you have a tumor in your brain, that causes you to throw up. Um, I felt like my brain was okay. I didn't feel any brain fog or anything, but I said, you know, let's figure it out because at this point it's getting pretty frustrated. Uh, someone that likes food like I do, not being able to eat for about a month and a half at this point was pretty frustrating and I was just looking for answers. Um, that scan of the brain never happened. We were waiting for the insurance to approve it and for whatever reason that was taking a few days and 
the insurance, uh, I guess we never got approval. Uh, we got approval after the fact, but um, I couldn't wait because I, I continued to throw up and I did some research on some other hospitals and I was debating on which one to go to and I figured um, with some feedback from a lot of people, uh, they recommended the University of Miami Medical Center, so thus I got my University of Miami hat. I didn't go there as a student, I guess I went there as a patient, and I'm super thankful for everyone there because uh, I went to the emergency room there, uh, again, after, had spending, after having spent four days in a different emergency room with no answers, uh, I went to University of Miami Medical Center, and within about 45 minutes, they said, hey, we found a growth in your small intestine. Uh, which I was thrilled because at that point I just wanted answers. Uh, they did some more tests and they said, um, we have a plan of attack. We're gonna go in and, and take out that portion of your small intestine. Uh, we'll cut on either end of it and we'll pull that portion with the, with the mass out and we'll fuse it back together and you should be uh, in good shape. So I said, great, we had a plan. Well, a couple days before surgery, they had run some biopsies on that mass, and it turns out that mass was malignant. And um, obviously that's a little bit of a shocker when you hear that. But the doctors were confident, and they, they uh, really basically said the plan has not changed. We're still gonna go in there. We're gonna take a little piece of that intestine, probably take a little bit bigger piece now that we know it's malignant, but the plan is still the same. So I went in there and had surgery, had a successful surgery where they took the tumor out. Um, and they also tested some lymph nodes while they were in there. Now the cancer did spread to some lymph nodes. So that's why it's considered stage three uh, cancer. Um, and again, there was really no plan of attack for or no uh, you know, traditional you know, game plan for small intestine cancer because it's so rare. So the playbook we're using is the playbook that they use for colon cancer. And that includes, um, at this point, 12 rounds or six months of chemotherapy, a chemotherapy called Folfox. And in order to get that Folfox or that uh, chemotherapy um, administered, I had a, a procedure done where they inserted a port into my chest and that port connects into a main artery. And so instead of um, getting needles in my arms to do chemotherapy, they just access it right through the port. And then the, the, the chemotherapy pumps in through the port, goes right into my main artery. And that's kind of how it works. So uh, 12 rounds of that, six months uh, worth of chemotherapy is what I am um, have ahead of me. And I've just finished round one. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been wild, um, but you know, I'm happy to say after round one, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, the way that chemo works is it's kind of a three-day process. I go in uh, on a Thursday, and they give me a couple of hours worth of chemo and administer it right through the port, and then what happens is I leave the facility, the cancer facility, and they give me a little kind of a pump and they have that pump connected to the port, and for the next three days, I'll still have kind of a slow drip of chemo being administered throughout that, uh, that three days. So the rest of the day Thursday, all day Friday, and into Saturday morning, then I go back to the cancer facility Saturday morning, they take it out, and then I have 10 days free of no chemo, of no uh, wires, of nothing connected, uh, and then every other Thursday, I go back and we do it again, and I'll be doing that till June. So that's the process of what I'm gonna be going through and the chemo is called Folfox and I think Folfox is just an abbreviation of the three types of, multiple types of medicines that they use, um, or the chemos that they, they inject into me. So, um, a quick update. After round one, uh, I felt great. I was bracing for side effects. Um, they talked about fatigue, they talked about nauseousness, they talked about cold sensitivity all of those things so I was bracing for all of those and uh, thank God I gone through round one and I disconnected my port yesterday today's Sunday and I feel great I didn't feel any side effects I felt strong um, and everything went smooth so far for round one so I'm excited um, with that I am still cautious because as confident as I am and as 
as sure as I am that everything is going to work itself out, um, I also know that cancer is a formidable opponent. Um, look, I believe in myself. I believe in, in kind of the, the strength that I have to fight things off. But I also know that cancer is, is really, really tough. So I'm not claiming victory yet. But I do think uh, after round one, uh, so far, I'm in the lead. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at um, from a health perspective. Um, what I also want to just talk about is kind of why I think so far I've won round one and why I know I'm going to win this whole battle. Uh, and there's a few things. Um, family, number one. Um, in, no, in no particular order, they're all equally as important. But I'll mention family first. Uh, number one, my wife Hilda, absolutely a rock. Uh, I'm gonna try to get through this whole video without crying, but no promises. Uh, again, I'm not gonna edit anything, so if something comes out, it, it does, but um, I'm, I'm gonna try to make sure I get through this without any tears. I'm trying to keep it short. I'm already over 10 minutes, so I'm already longer than I wanted to. But my wife, uh, Hilda, absolute rock. Um, I could not even think about tackling this journey and this tough battle without her by my side she's been amazing and my um, my kids Isaac and Sophia just beast mode all the way they they are stronger than I can ever imagine and keeping my spirits up and, and just seeing them just fuels me to continue to be strong and keep fighting um, you know when you get sick I'm 47 years old but you always kind of revert back to when you're a little kid. And when you're a little kid, you get sick, what do you want? You want your mom nearby. And I'm fortunate enough to have my mom here. She came down after my first surgery. Uh, she went back to Chicago and then she came back here for my first round of chemo. And just, you know, amazing to have her here. My sister's also here. She also came down after my first surgery or after the surgery that I had to remove the portion of my small intestine. And, and she went back to Chicago. She's back here again in Florida. Um, and, uh, and then here for my first round of chemo, um, my niece Karina and Sienna, her daughter's here. And, and I mean, the energy and the, um, the, just the joy that they're bringing me, I, I'm telling you, that's all part of the equation that's making me win round one. Um, prior to me starting round one, Kind of sounds odd to say uh, you know, my wife's sister which I, I love my entire wife's family which I'm not even gonna call it my wife's family it's my family as well uh, but you know um, Sally and Gary came to visit from Chicago as well they actually surprised me with a uh, with a mariachi that uh, played for about an hour here at my house so we had a pre chemotherapy party now, I don't know if anyone has a pre chemotherapy party but that's just the way we roll but again, those are all things that just le led to, I think, a successful round one. Um, Amelia and Joe, uh, they're also, uh, my, my wife's sister, uh, they live nearby and they've been here supporting me the whole time. I've had visitors, you know, since I've had the surgery. Natalie, Talia, Nico, Sergio popped in even. Um, just. The, the visitors and, and the, the family support has been unreal and I haven't even started with all of the messages the calls the prayers and all of the folks that have just reached out um, it's just been unbelievable my cousin Javi who lives here has been you know amazing um, the neighbors just the, even the neighbors and you know while I was in surgery one of the neighbors helped take Isak to basketball practice the other neighbors popped in when the mariachi was here and just, you know, they've been all supportive. Um, so that has contributed. I mean, I can't tell you how grateful and blessed I feel for all the support. Uh, and then just all the messages that I've gotten, uh, it's been crazy. Um, the other thing is just the, the faith. Uh, I truly believe that this is gonna work out and I'm going to be victorious. And uh, I don't know, I don't claim to even pretend to, to know what God's plans are, but uh, whatever they are, I'm embracing them. 
Um, from the moment I got told I had cancer, I said I'm not going to let this cancer uh, go to waste. It's going to be a productive cancer. Something great is going to come out of it. I don't know why I was chosen, but I'm embracing the fact that I'm chosen. I'm glad it's me and not, you know, my wife, my kids, or anyone else that I love. Uh, I'm, I'm embracing it. I'll take it, and I'm, uh, again, just embracing every step of the journey without questioning a single reason and why or anything like that. Not, not that has not entered my mind one time. So I think having that positive mentality has helped. Um, and then the prayers that I've gotten, and I feel from all parts of, of, of the, everybody. I mean, it's, a cra it's crazy, the power of prayer, and I feel it uh, from everyone. So many people have been praying for me. I feel it. Um, my cousin, Hav, he's got a friend, uh, Tony, that uh, I don't even know this guy. Uh, I feel like I do because, you know, Javi talks about him all the time, and, and uh, uh, but I don't know him personally, but, you know, he, he put my message out there on, on relevant radio for, you know, millions of people to interject and pray for me, and, and you know, that's just, that's real. That, that uh, I've had people say that they've been in their congregation, in their churches, in their, you know, places of worship, and they've offered up prayers for me and their entire church and their entire congregation is praying for me and they don't even know me and I'm telling you that has significant power um, so um, I think you put all those things together and that's led to a successful round one not to mention I think my wife uh, as I started my first chemotherapy session um, I think my wife reached out to a few people and said hey uh, hit this guy up with a bunch of messages so as I sat down in my chemo chair, which I gotta tell you, the, the, the chemo chairs at the University of Miami Sylvester Cancer Center, they're great, they're re recliners, massage chairs, they're heated, um, super comfortable. I sat back and I was ready to get that chemo and I looked at my phone and all of a sudden I'm starting to get messages from all kinds of people. So I think my wife set it up where, you know, all kinds of people started sending me messages just at the right time and it really distracted me from the fact that I was going through what I was going through and it lifted my spirits again I mean, my wife is just unbelievable setting stuff like that up but everyone responding with you know sending messages I, got, I heard from people I haven't heard from in a long time and it just brought me a lot of joy and that's part of what I talk about when I say I'm not gonna let this good cancer go to waste I'm gonna make sure that we absolutely uh, something good comes out of it so um, I just you know uh, the family um, my mom my sister here wife, my kids, my in-laws, which, you know, they're just as part of my family as anyone else. It's been incredible and uh, it's helped me. And, and again, all of you all who are watching this, who are just asking how I'm doing, uh, maybe you haven't even reached out, but in your own silent prayers, you've, you know, brought me into them. And trust me, I feel that as well. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, as some of the moments have been hard, uh, as positive as I'm trying to be. And sometimes when I lay at night, uh, my wife's taking the brunt of it. Um, you know, some nights are a little rough where I lay down and it just kind of hits me. Uh, kind of hard to think that I, I have stage three cancer, but um, most of the day I'm okay. Sometimes at night it gets a little rough, but it's okay. I shed a few tears every now and then, and that's okay too. Uh, I'll continue to do that. Um, because it's part of the process and it's a, it's, it's a, it's a big fight. So obviously some tears are gonna show up there. Uh, but I just can't thank everyone enough from coworkers to family and friends and, and everyone for sending messages uh, and, and lifting my spirits. Um, that's my update for now. The good news is I'm feeling good, I'm feeling healthy. Uh, this video was probably three times longer than I wanted it to be, but I, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure I got all those things out. And um, I will try to give an update after every round. Uh, so I've got 12 rounds coming up and I'll try to keep you guys as updated as possible. But please, if you feel free to keep those messages coming, keep texting me. If you just stumbled upon this video and you just, you know, um, uh, are in a position where you just got diagnosed or you have some one of these rare cancers like I have that uh, they don't even have a playbook for, um, 
feel free to leave a message and maybe we can connect. I'm just here to help and try to you know, share my story. Uh, every story is different. I know that um, some people have significant side effects right away. I didn't, uh, but every story is different. And I, I do believe faith, power of prayer, the family, the friends, all of that uh, has played a role in having me uh, have a successful round one. And uh, I'm looking looking forward to the next few rounds and uh, see what happens. I do believe with every fiber in my body that I will beat this thing and I will come out victorious. Um, but I know it's not going to be easy. And all of your prayers uh, are still needed and I'll accept them. Um, but I am thankful to be in this position. Um, I'm embracing it. And... I'm ready to keep fighting. So, again, I'll send another video out after every round of chemo uh, to keep you all updated. Thanks again for your prayers. Thanks for all the love. And um, we'll keep the fight going. And for all my uh, friends and family in Chicago, I know it's freezing out there. Uh, stay warm, and we'll, uh, we'll keep you all updated. Thanks again, and, and keep the messages coming. Trust me, they do, do help so, so much. Uh, appreciate all your kind words. And again, I'm feeling strong. We're gonna beat this. Thanks.